跟你聊。哦、oh, ，对，我从后边跟你聊。Streaming. 
Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of I Chongqing's channel. This is Echo Chain. In today's live stream, we invited the representatives of Chongqing Enterprises in Vivon Leon and Yubla of Mexico, and Webla of Mexico, I'm sorry. And Nick is going to visit Chongqing Haifu Medical Technology to share the scenarios of the high-tech medical treatment and overseas support center. This whole idea of the show aimed at presenting the cooperation between Chongqing and Mexico in the manufacturing and technological field and the future within it. So stay tuned, like, share, and subscribe to us. So in our first section, I'm going to start with our guest in Mexico. Mexico. We have Roberto Carlos in our show today. He is the representative of plant manager of Mexico facility in Mexico Machine Industrial, a Chinese company directly invested by China Chongqing Machine Yisheng Machinery Company, LTD. This is a high-tech enterprise specializing in R&D production and sales of the internal combustion engine crankshaft and compressor crankshaft. Founded in 1994, the company is headquartered in Fuling High-Tech Zone, Chongqing, with four subside diaries and three manufacturing bases. The company has 26 production line, uh, lines, a research and development center of more than 1,000 square meters, more than 20 customers, 71 patents, and an annual output value of nearly 400 million yuan, about 57 million US dollars. We have some videos and pictures to show this company for you. Please see this. And this is what this is the one in Fulin. The other three are in Mexico. And here is a charity act activity of the company. And this is the product crankshaft that they produced. We also have some videos of their This company is one of the international and world-renowned small precision crankshaft manufacturing bases and an excellent supplier of Emerson, Honda, Kohler, and other international brand customers. In 2018, the company's overseas subsidiaries in Mexico was officially put into operation in order to better serve North American customers and expand the North American market. It has been operating well for six years, and now the company's crankshaft production scales is 2.6 million uh, pieces per year with Profits and taxes reaching 3 million US dollars. 
So I guess we will start with our guest today, Mr. Roboto. I'm going to put you on the screen. Yes, hello, Hi, Mr. Mother. Roboto. Hi, nice to see you there. Um, I was informed that the manufacturing here is located in um, your city, Mexico. It ranges uh, 25,000 square meters with about 80 people. So can you please introduce a little bit about yourself to us and show us your current location? Hello, good morning. Thank you for your invitation. Um, we are uh, Mexican Industrial Mexico. It's a Chinese company with capital Chinese. We are located in Monterrey, in, in the area of Monterrey, Mexico City. This area is located 200 kilometers from the border to United States in the north of, of Mexico City. And we are uh, uh, enterprise uh, Chinese directly, uh, or subsidiary, Chongqing Machine Gizeng Machinery, invest in 2017, uh, starting with two lines. Actually, we duplicate our capacity. And as you mentioned, we produce 2.8 million of shops for cost American customers like Emerson. Uh, and we are continue growing every every year because we are taking advantage of the our, our location is close to the biggest uh, american market that is north america our biggest customer actually is emerson but we have other very good customers that are interesting in that we invest for produce parts and components for them like rich and stratons like honda like cooler and uh, right now uh, we thinking that it's a good opportunity for continue growing in this company. Thank you. Thank you for the brief introducer of your company and this manufacturing for us. I, we, we know the company supplies OEM components to some world leading brands like we just mentioned. Uh, so what's your main production line in this manufacturing? Can you introduce them to us? Yes, actually, we our, our main customer is uh, Emerson. Emerson Klein is a big customer for machine Gixen. This is uh, we produce for for them 2.8 million shops yearly basis in Mexico, but in China we produce other 2 million sets. Um, this is our biggest customer actually, and we have a, a second customer that is uh, Wilpur that we are working for produce 1 million sets next year. Well, actually, our team in China is working for setting all the machinery and send to us to Mexico. Mexico. And to, in this year, we will install our fit line for produce crunches for Wilpur uh, customer too. In total, this year, in the end of this year, we will produce around 3.5 million set of crunches for climate uh, compressors and for incinerator machines for, for food industry. Thank you, Mr. Roboto. Um, we are re really looking forward to the, the next future production, the new production line in your manufacturing basis. Um, I wonder, you know, what are these technological or production advances of your company of this production line because we've seen those videos before we've seen some automatic robot arms that can produce uh products really uh, automatically like without no manpower in the manufacturing um besides that we do we do we have any other technological or production advances that can beat the other manufacturers in this field Yes, uh, we are using actually top manufacturing processes. We have a high technology machines. We, we have a, for cutting the steel, we have some machines that are using cutting inserts and this very, very, they provide very smooth quality in, in, the, in the bars that we cut. We have centerless uh, grinding machines from, from made in, Jap in Japan. We have uh, lathes and, and milling machines. The technology are Japanese too, and they are very accurate for produce all the shapes and, and forms that or products that we need. And we have a very good quality controls inside to the floor shop. We have CM, CMM machines, 
Rownest Tester Machines, uh, Profile Meter Machines. And we are using the top technology in the, in the market and because we want to be a very efficient company, try to reduce the, the labor that we use. We only use the, the labor necessary for adjust the machines, make the setups of the machines and checking the parts. But the, the, all the automatic system that you see is for try to be more efficient and try to reduce our cost every day. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Roboto. Um, I have to remind our audience right now because I've seen those comments coming up to us. Uh, greetings. Hi. Uh, you know, everybody who is who has been familiar with our shows would be uh, noted that Chongqing is a huge, com huge city for manufacturing inter in uh, industry. So... This is kind of our city's advantages to influence the world. And, but we only few of us know um, that there is a huge company, huge one in, uh, in this industry, in this crankshaft industry in Fulin, in Chongqing. And it has already influenced the world, especially in Mexico. And we also know Chongqing has always built in the bridge with Mexico between uh, within the cultural and technological and economical side. So for guys who are coming up to our show, Trevor, Ken, hi, Nico. Hi, everyone. Hi. Um, I have to say I really appreciate you guys can enjoy the show. Also, Holly, also my dear Brenda, I'm glad to see you again. Um, Brenda, maybe you can pop up some questions about this industry if you want it in Spanish. Yeah, because I can't speak Spanish, but our guests, they are really good at of their mother language. So maybe we can uh, communicate in your field with your language. Thank you guys for your supporting. And thanks, Mr. Roboto, um, for all those inf information about your manufacturing in your production line and your advanced advan advantages of your products um, and the corporations between you uh, the, those products and your brand and the other international brands um, I've seen your information um, on the news about that you have a really complicated uh, completed um, supply chain so that is one of your advantages to uh, serve those brands. Um, and I wonder, how did this investment happen in your city? Because I know it's a big investment. Um, why the Max, M M Xin, uh, Yisheng McHenry choose to locate their business in this city, in Montari? Did you get any support from the local government or the local authority? on this Chongqing Mexico cooperation? Yes, uh, the, the first step was with our customer. They request to us that they want most of the materials short, uh, very close to, to their facilities, located in, in, in Reynosa. It's a, a city near of the border of, of North America and in, and in Ohio. For this reason, they request to our corporate that that install a new facility close to, to this location. And the best location was Monterey. The idea was to move a, a facility here and try to, to produce parts with similar costs than in China. The advantage in Mexico is that the salary is similar or a little bit uh, uh, slow than China. And uh, we have a good workers and the materials like uh, raw materials, uh, electricity, gas, every, uh, all, all, all these kind of materials are cheaper in, in Mexico than in America. And the taxes uh, is, we have an advantage that we are a um, regimen made, uh, named Maquiladora. With this re regimen, we cannot pay taxes for import and export materials because it's part of the USCMC agreement with the United States. And this give uh, Mexico an uh, opportunity to produce materials, import materials, raw materials, transform in products, and send back to the to the final customer in America. This kind of, of uh, system avoid any taxes and is uh, good for the companies. 
for this reason, uh, uh, our corporate decided to, to move a facility in Mexico because it's close to the to the final customer market for because the taxes uh, are lower and Monterrey is a city that have a good uh, labor, uh, well-trained, well-educated, or uh, they can produce the parts with high quality level as the final customer needs. So um, it's about the tax policy, taxes per policy, and the other supportive policy that they you got you can use to build your company here to um, import those technologies from Chongqing. Am I correcting? And also the financial support from the local authority. So um, I have to ask you. I know it's a bit bit a little bit late in your area, but I have to ask you. Can you please show us around in this manufacturing that? Uh, to to see those scenarios in the production line, because we are just heading switch our camera to the another city. Uh, I know it's not um, easy to stick with us, so I'm gonna ask you guys to stick with us a little bit later. Um, and uh, Mr. Roboto will show us the manufacturing scenario later. Is that okay? Okay. Um, so let's just switch our camera back to another part, another city, um, in the state of, in the state of Webola, about 130 kilometers, not southwest of Mexico City, the capital, where we are about to connect with the representative of Haifu Mexico Medical Center. Hello. Hello, Mr. Hello. Hi. Hi. So, so um, I'm sorry, I can still hear my voice in your area. I can still hear, I can still hear some uh, echoes. What about now? Is it better? Um, yeah, is it much better? It's much better. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jorge and uh, Eric, right? Eric will be the translator of our show today. You know, the Haifu Mexico uh, Medical Center was supported on the contract of the Haifu Medical Technology Company. Founded in 1999, Chongqing Haifu Medical Technology Company, LT is headquartered in Chongqing, China, and keeps being a work in manufacturing of non-invasive ultrasound therapeutic uh, systems for both uh, medicinal and tumors. Uh, the employee pool exists 400%, including top class experts in Haifu field. The Haifu company's project in Mexico is uh, deploying ultrasound machines to help change the way physicians there deal with solid tumors with cancer patients from the country and throughout the Americas. This is really impressive. So uh, how's there, uh, Mr. Jorge? Can you briefly introduce yourself and your current location to us? Hola, buenos días. Mi nombre es Jorge Luis Flores. Soy empresario mexicano. Eh, actualmente eh, soy socio director de Haifu México. Y les comento también que el Centro Médico de Ablación Tumoral está ubicado en la ciudad de Puebla, una de las ciudades importantes en México, y está ubicado a como 90 minutos de la Ciudad de México. Good morning, my name is Jorge, and I'm a Mexican businessman who collaborates in projects in various lines, mainly in the technological and medical sector. Likewise, I am founding partner of the Hypo Company in Mexico and general director of the Tumor Ablation Medical Center. The CEMAT is located in the city of Puebla, one of the regions with the highest economic growth in the recent year, located just 90 minutes from Mexico City. It has all the public medical transportation services, ETC. So what's the core technology of the center? 
Um, and how does this medical center apply this tech to help the locals? Can you share some specific success for treatment examples for us? Claro que sí. En el Centro Médico de Ablación Tumoral eh, hacemos ablación para tumores benignos y malignos utilizando la tecnología HIFU, que es ultrasonido focalizado de alta intensidad. Es un equipo como el que tengo a mis espaldas, que es la máquina JC. Um, at first, the medical contribution that we have here in this demat is about using the USG high food technology, an alternative for tumor ablation without a scapel. Uh, with which patient can forget about post-surgical complications such as pain, long recovery time or infection, and you can see the device that is just behind him. So um, I want to know if there is some specific uh, um, treatment examples that you can show us, like how did you treat those locals with this uh, high technology uh, medical uh, treatment? Do you have any examples for to show us? Lo que más me impresiona de la tecnología son los casos que tienen que ver con tumores en cáncer. Eh, el día de ayer nos visitó una de las pacientes con un seguimiento de 12 meses con un cáncer de páncreas. La paciente la pude ver yo mismo. El ensemblante le cambió significativamente. Los tumores, los tumores, eh, los marcadores tumorales han disminuido bastante. Eh, viene con una actitud positiva mucho, mucho mejor de cuando la conocimos a esta paciente que se trató su tumor en cáncer de páncreas. Otro de los casos también muy significativo es una persona con adenomiosis uterina la cual uno de sus síntomas era un sangrado abundante. Eh, comento que no podía dormir si no era con un pañal porque el sangrado era demasiado grande, demasiado extenso. Y a través del de tratamiento con nosotros, eh, el paciente pudo recuperar su, su, su vida sana, eh, redignificó su vida y actualmente nos sorprende porque ahora tiene intenciones reproductivas. Um, the cases that we have like surprised the most, uh, for example, cancers, tumors uh, that are at rest. For example, a patient with a tumor in the pancreas will look very deteriorated when she arrived and whose laboratory studies show high tumor marker yesterday came for her 12 month follow up visit. Unfortunately, her countenance had changed. It looked with a very positive attitude and the tumor marker have dropped compared to our first visit. Indeed, you can see the picture that they are just behind me. Like what we attended a patient with severe uh, symptoms of uterine fibroid. One of the symptoms that the most altered her quality of life was profit bleeding, uh, so much so she had to wear diaper to sleep. In the first menstrual cycle after treatment, she was able to sleep without any diaper since the bleeding decreased. Uh, to a great extent, the touch, she recovered her quality of life. Now she wants to uh, have a baby. This is really impressive because we know that under the uh, challenge of the COVID-19 worldwide, it's really important to have better treatment, better surgery supportive technology for patients everywhere to rise their living quality and to keep them health, to treat their diseases. And thank you for sharing those examples for us and i know there are many examples for the Me mexico high food mexico medical center to use this technology to help the patients and i want to know what's the biggest challenge of the corroboration project from Chongqing to mexico in this medical center Um, siempre van a existir desafíos. Eh, nuestro trabajo es afrontarlos y, y avanzar. Principalmente ten, tendría que ser, bueno, uno de los desafíos son las 14 horas de diferencia en horarios, los más de 14 mil kilómetros de distancia entre Chongqing y México. Eh, y aquí en México principalmente también es la burocracia en el sistema de salud. Eh, 
eh, el, el desconocimiento de la tecnología para, para nuestros médicos y nuestros pacientes, pero gracias a una importante colaboración con Chongqing y México, una comunicación constante, hemos logrado eh, eh, rebasar estas barreras. Challenges are content in any business relationship, despite the fact that some might mention that working with someone who is located more than 14 hours apart and almost 14,000 kilometers away are great challenges. I can say that the challenges have to do with sharing the technological vision with the specialists of our country. Given that, faced with a health system like ours, with all protocols and high bureaucratic barriers, medical technology and innovation from a private sector is often discouraged. It has been essential that the Chinese team has maintained high levels of communication so that in this way we can enter this market. Thank you. I have some information about um, this disease in Mexico um, about the cancer situation. I want to share this because this is really important to know um, why there's importance to import those uh, technology um, from Chongqing to cure the patients in their area. You know, cancer is a big issue in Mexico which has, I have to mute this, I'm sorry, I still can't hear the echo. <laughs> Cancer is a big issue in Mexico, as we just said, which has a population of about 127 million. There were uh, over like 1,196,667 cases in the country in 2018, and um, 80, 83.7, uh, seven, 80, 80, I'm sorry, 83.7, 47, uh, 6, I'm so sorry, I must be kind of nervous to read on the, all those numbers today. 83,000 deaths from the disease according to the Pan American Health Organization. It is a relevant technology mentioned about this high food technology to assist in the case of cancer patients, making it more feasible for animated the uh, cellular activity of the malignant tumor and therapy limit the pr progression of the disease. This was quoted by an article from China Daily to report on this uh, Chongqing Mexico high food medical corroboration project. So I want to show you guys those, although I didn't pronounce those numbers really correctly, but I want to show you guys the number because this is really important. And we want to know, the next part is we want to know, is how did this corroboration happen in your city? Did you get any support from the uh, local authority or local government, Mr. Okay. Como empresario tenemos eh, distintas redes de, de comunicación y colaboración con otros empresarios. Fue a través de uno de los médicos que junto a mis socios, el arquitecto Aldo y el doctor Gerardo Díaz, nos hicieron la presentación de esta tecnología, el doctor Armando Gu, que es el gerente regional de Iberoamérica. Eh, fue así como pudimos conocer esta parte de la tecnología y fue cómo eh, decidimos traer esta parte de, de, de tecnología a México. Puebla es el lugar donde reside actualmente el Centro Médico de Aplación Tumoral y eh, eh, lo grande de lograr esto es que esto sucedió durante el confinamiento de COVID-19. Entonces, la comunicación entre Shonkin y México fue muy importante eh, debido para que ocurriera a traer este, este tipo de tecnologías a México. The my contact and support network are extensive and very diverse. I have had the opportunity to work with a large no number of specialists and other businessmen, among which the person who recommended me to the sales representative for Latin America, Dr. Armando Gu. Dr. Gu presented to me and my partner, Mr. Aldo Rodriguez and Dr. Gerardo Garcia, and the opportunity of a project that we believe would be a great opportunity to generate technological and medical value in our country. As I already mentioned, Puebla is one of the cities with the greatest development at a national and regional level, which uh, is why I decided that our installation would be taking place here. Uh, 
I would like to emphasize that it was a coordination exercise with our Mexican authority who have endorsed the incursion at all time and establishment of this. It is important to highlight the support that HIFU gave us uh, at all the time to make this possible since it was during the confinement of COVID-19 that the entire process was carried out. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jorge and Eric for introducing us about my question. And I know I still can hear echoes. I'm so sorry. Maybe affect our audience um, reaction on this. Can you just uh, turn on this echo? Hi. OK, uh, still the echo. <laughs> Hi. So, uh, never mind. Uh, although I could understand, there has been some. Um, I'm going to mute this. I'm going to have to mute this. Though I have to uh, say that I cannot pronounce those numbers or these technological words and the medical words from Haifu Technology really correctly. But, but I'm really glad we have invited the, an expert from Haifu. Medical Center in Chongqing to introduce this technology for us. But before that, I still have one question for Mr. Ho Hei. That is, what's the future plan of the development of the center um, and the further collaboration with Haifu? Mm -hmm. um, obviamente, nosotros tenemos un plan a futuro de crecimiento. Deseamos que cada vez más pacientes conozcan y puedan tratarse con esta tecnología, así como también más médicos conozcan esta tecnología. Nuestra intención en México es que tengamos un equipo como esto en cada uno de los estados de la República Mexicana y eh, esto cambia las vidas de cada uno de los pacientes. Queremos que más familias sean beneficiadas con este tratamiento. And that we seek to grow for more widespread medical and social acceptance at the national level to care for a greater number of patients, to train more doctors for the knowledge and use of technology, to create our first international USG high food technology workshop, uh, until extending the physical presence of more JC devices throughout the Mexican Republic in order to share the benefit to more patients. Okay, so you are going to train more doctors and uh, to get more support from uh, this technology. And uh, uh, I can really understand that you've been, you are been working through a, you know, very, very challenging situation. It's about the time differences with the, the jet lag between your area and our area. And I know it's been really arduous for both sides uh, cooperate on this, you know, with those 40, almost 14 hours time difference. And it's really difficult to, to do this, but, um, I think this is what makes it, makes this project make the medical center so magnificent in social way. So I'm really grateful to, uh, invite you to show this, to introduce your industry, this, um, one, two, bring more happiness, to bring more health to the, your locals here. Um, I have a video from the Haifu Mexico Center. I'm going to put it on the screen and show you guys the scenarios of the medical center. Okay? Ocios de mama y tumores pancreático. Haifu es un método que puede producir la destrucción selectiva de tumores sin causar ningún daño a los tejidos superpuestos que lo rodean. Una alternativa que no solo te ayuda a recuperar tu salud, sino que también redignifica el proceso de sanación al ofrecerte un tratamiento no invasivo, seguro y efectivo, sin cortes, sin perforaciones, sin sangrado y con menos dolor. La experiencia semate proveerá de todas las atenciones y comodidades durante tu tratamiento, priorizando siempre tu salud y bienestar. Para saber si eres candidato a este tratamiento, ponte en contacto con nosotros. Será un placer atenderte y ser parte del proceso en el que por fin recuperarás tu salud. So, 
So the high food te te techniques are used in tissue ablation, uh, ablation a minor many invasive procedure used to destroy abnormal tissue without damage the surrounding or overlying tissues around cancer tumors. This is the basic concept of this technology. But I think we just mentioned we have an expert and Nick is with her in Haifu, Chongqing, to introduce uh, the technology and the technical center uh, on, on, uh, to help the over their overseas collaborators in the center. And I'm gonna put you guys on the screen, okay? Hi, Nick. Hi, this is Nick. Yeah, hi, hi. Okay. hello, everyone. Okay. As you can see, I am at the headquarter of Chongqing Haifu Medical Inter Technology. And now we are actually in a center, in a global med in a global telemedicine center of Chongqing Haifu Technology. And we are so honored to have Professor Xing join us and introduce, in, and introduce us more about this center. So first of all, Professor Xing, can you, can you introduce yourself a little bit? Okay. Uh, um, hi, Echo, and uh, hi, everyone. And uh, I'm uh, Dr. Sh Rosie Xing. I'm the managing director of the international business at Chongqing Haifu Medical. Okay. And uh, so, Echo, first, I really sympathize you that you have to pronounce, have the trouble, uh, problem of pronouncing uh, all these uh, medical terms, okay? And uh, uh, so, hello. And so we are live streaming from the telemedicine center of Chongqing Health Medical. And uh, we can see a huge screen just behind us. Yeah, just us. give you a camera tool. As you can see, uh, there is a huge screen behind us. So what mm -hmm. are they and what are they used for? And Dr. Xin will give us a detailed introduction so you guys will know the stories behind and the fantastic technology that has brought benefits to the humankind. Okay. And uh, 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 Echo, actually, everyone, uh, there's an Echo, so I'll take off my earphone here. And uh, so I would actually uh, just pick up a few of the questions that Echo actually asked our uh, Mex Mexican center uh, a bit, a bit business partner, okay? Uh, and uh, one question is about uh, how do we overcome the challenges of supporting our global centers that has jet lags? Like uh, in uh, with Mexico, we have 14 hours time difference, okay? And this is achieved through this telemedicine center. If you can see the screen behind me, this is a CMAT Haifu Mexico. Actually, this is connected to the center or to our uh, the, uh, 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 Mexican center, okay? So this telemedicine uh, 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 center is connecting to over 250 centers, including China and our global centers. Uh, Chongqing have, have about 60 centers, overseas centers, okay, uh, in the, around the global in 29 countries and uh, the region, uh, including the Oxford Center. Actually, in the Oxford, the UK is our first uh, overseas uh, user centers, okay. And the, what this telemedicine center does is uh, most importantly, is that you can see our doctor's team, okay, and our engineer, uh, engineer's team, okay, is in the 24-hour, 24-7, okay, uh, supporting the needs of our global centers and also our national centers. So what the doctors does, okay, you, you can see some of the live stream there connecting to our national centers, okay, if you see that, the, see all the colors, okay, Actually, our doctors are just are supporting a, a live surgery over the distance. And what makes this possible is because this technology is digitized. It's AI compatible, okay? So we call this a, a virtual knife, a high food knife, but it's a virtual knife, okay? So as our Mexican uh, uh, partner already introduced, okay, there's no bleeding. During the treatment, there's no contact, direct contact between the doctor and the patient, okay? So this is really a revolutionized technology and the Chongqing Hypermedical is the global provider of this technology, okay? So through this uh, uh, telemedicine center, during COVID-19, we not only overcome 
the time difference of supporting our overseas centers for uh, consultation, for difficult cases in the consultation, for the doctors uh, uh, advance the training, and also for clinical support, okay. In 4G, so now in 5G, actually the, the lag between the two screens, screens on doctor's screen and the, the, uh, the treatment on, on the OVC site is just one second, okay. It's so a one second lag, it's almost simultaneously, okay. So it feels like you have a senior doctor Okay, technologists sitting behind the doctors that need the uh, the assistance of uh, uh, this uh, uh, during the surgery. Okay, so this will not only provide the assistance that the doctor needs, but more importantly, it will safeguard the safety of the patients go, who is to go under the surgery. Okay, uh, so and uh, uh, so the, uh, and another. Another uh, question is, uh, I pick up another uh, question Echo asked, okay, is about the, what is the benefits actually on the patient side, okay? So since this is a contact free, okay, and uh, uh, the re uh, it can be done in the day surgery uh, setting, okay? So you're going a major surgery, but with no bleeding, no scar, fast recovery, and you can go home uh, on the same day. So it's the day surgery uh, procedure can be done actually Almost all uh, OVC uh, centers uh, uh, utilize the day surgery mode, okay, to provide this service. And for the patients, okay, uh, you can consider a uh, weekend uh, surgery, okay? Mm -hmm. So it means you come in to do the surgery on Friday, Monday, you are going back to work. This well, is that's really, really important. impressive. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and we I have some comments. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Just keep on. Yeah, after, after knowing about this technology, I was so impressed because I think this can, technology can bring a lot of benefits to the humankind, not only in terms of the technology advancement, but which have facilitated the recovery of the patients, but also the te technology can bring more benefits to the ordinary people, both in China and international cities so uh, I, we want to know that uh, this remote this this telemedicine center what does it mean to to us to the ordinary people to both uh, the citizens in the international cities and uh, also in Chongqing okay uh, so uh, this telemedicine center actually is uh, one part of uh, what we call the total solution. Okay, we utilize center. This center actually is mostly to support the doctors, also to ensure the uh, the the our system is operating normally. Okay, uh, so for the on the patient side, I think uh, if you are the patients, okay, and uh, you just need to know that, okay. I think you can be more at ease. You know that it's not only just your doctor who's mm -hmm. performing the procedure, but actually we have experts thousands of miles away to, in, to do the surgery together, okay? And uh, so this is very important. And also, pre probably just I want to use one minute to explain to those uh, uh, the, the, the common people, okay, who want to know this technology. So um, I try to explain that in the layman's uh, uh, language so you will understand, okay? So uh, this actually, the principle is very similar to uh, you put a piece of paper underneath the magnifying glass. Mm -hmm. And what will happen? The p paper will be lit on fire, mm -hmm. okay? So switch the sunlight to the ultrasound beam, focus the ultrasound beam, okay? It, the difference is at the focal point, the energy is probably 30,000 times of that of the sunlight, okay? So this is the principle, okay? Mm -hmm. Just since the sunlight is uh, harmless to your body, mm -hmm. the ultrasound beam, okay, unlike the, X, uh, unlike the radiation therapy, okay, uh, radiation is, uh, will cause damage to your uh, cells and the tissues, but the ultrasound, okay, mm -hmm. since we use that for diagnosis, mm -hmm. okay, actually is uh, harmless to your body, okay? Uh, so. There, therefore, you know, it is, uh, this is a non, so why it can treat the lesion, okay, 
it will not do any damage to your surrounding tissues, okay? So this is one thing, okay? And how it works? So think about uh, cooking an egg, okay? So when you cook an egg under the heat, okay, uh, when the temperature rises about 65, the protein will undergo, will be cooked. Mm -hmm. What does it mean cook? It means the, the tumor cells will be cooked, okay? That means they're no longer alive. Okay, and the, what's amazing is that our body actually, the immune system knows how to deal with the dead tissues. Okay, so once it's the dead, so unlike the surgery, because we're not taking it out, we leave it inside, but it's uh, no longer alive. Our body actually will gradually absorb the dead tissues. So if you look at the uterine fibroids, okay, for patients with uterine fibroids, means that the benign tumor actually occupies where the baby should grow. Okay, so for those women, actually, they, they can no longer pregnant, uh, they have a subfertility, okay? Oh. So once this uh, big egg uh, tumor, it's like, think about like an egg, it's cooked, okay? Uh, uh, in about uh, six months to a year, okay, the uterus will restore to its original shape, okay? And uh, three months after the procedure, Okay, the women actually can stand, uh, uh, for those who want to have babies, can start to plan to have babies compared to the conventional uh, technology or the surgery, such as the laparoscopic surgery, which is a minimal invasive surgery. Patients usually have to wait a year and a year and a half because of the scar. Okay, so this is technology, is the new option for women who wish to have a, uh, babies, okay, but uh, cannot due to uh, benign disease such as the uterine fibroid and uh, adenomyosis, okay. Well, that's really specific. So if and if if anyone has problems in in the, these aspects, I think this is the new option for you to to solve your problems or the disease. So. Also, we just saw like mask masking center. So we know that this center is connected to different centers in different cities abroad. So we would like to know that some stories behind this. So can you tell us more about your efforts to expand the international market as well as to grow your global influence? Okay. And uh, as a business partner in Mexico Center has already mentioned, huh, since this is the uh, medical technology, okay? And uh, we, uh, for, the, for, for us to deliver this service to uh, reach more people, more patients, okay? We first have to work with the international professional societies to educate the doctors, to let the doctors know this technology. And then to through the social media, such as this, mm -hmm. to let the more patients to know, oh, there's a non-invasive technology, a new option for uh, cancer treatment, whether it's a, a, a benign tumor or it's a malignant tumor, okay? Uh, and uh, so this is the continuous effort we have to do, okay? Because uh, it takes time for we to for us to accept new ideas, even with medical professionals, okay? Uh, second is that, okay, uh, we have to uh, work, uh, uh, we work closely uh, with our global business partners, okay, and to try to uh, establish this, uh, such as the Mexico Center, okay, so that uh, uh, to show that the patients benefits, the doctors are happy, and also the investors who invest in this technology are not only uh, advanced the medical civilization, but, but actually it opens a new business, okay? Even our doctors, okay, in the group practice, when adopt this technology, okay, can not only bring a new option to the patients, but also on the financial side, they can benefit from this technology, okay? So we, we are go, actually, we work very closely with the, uh, local, uh, the, uh, the local government, okay? And even with the, uh, 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 with the Chinese, uh, on the Chinese government side, okay? And we think, uh, uh, and we actually uh, have a step through the 60 centers around the globe. We're almost connected the Belt Road Initiative regions, okay? Wow. So we think, we, we, we hope we're going to uh, utilize the Belt Road uh, Initiative, okay? And to accelerate the uh, global uh, dissemination of this technology. 
Wow. Whether in terms of the whether in terms of improved people's health, or so in terms of the economic growth and the co cooperation between countries, this center really matters a lot. And um, I know that uh, many of you have know much know more about this technology and this center. Uh, so, Dr. Xing, would you like to share more? To us, something else. If if you want to share with us or stories, uh, you know, actually, I think uh, the for the, so the oh, well, there's so many so many uh, touching stories. Okay, I actually don't even know which one to to start. Okay, okay, and the, but uh, the also uh, the most mature area for this technology actually is in women's health. It's actually to protect and improve the infertility, the fertility health. Of women, okay, so it's not. Uh, so we have about close to three thousand. We call the H A I F U babies around the globe. Why we call that? It's not we call that. Actually, is the mother one of the mother who suffer from uterine fibroids cannot have baby, and after undergo this uh, procedure, and the. Uh, she realized her dream to become a mother. Okay, so she told us that this baby is a HIFU baby because without this technology, she, the baby will not have the chance to meet the world. So around the globe, we have about 3,000 or so HIFU babies. Okay, so th I think uh, these babies will not be made possible. Uh, it's the gift. Yeah. I think this is the gift send of this technology, okay? And uh, also on the uh, cancer patient side, okay, I still remember, I remember when I visit our Carroll Center uh, in Egypt, okay? Um, uh, and it happened to be one of the liver cancer patients came from Saudi Arabia mm -hmm. for, the, for the annual checkup, okay? So th this gentleman, okay, in his 50s, she, uh, he is the a bread bringer of the family. Okay, uh, so when he found he had a stage three, uh, means late stage liver cancer. Okay, he was only given three months to live. Mm -hmm. Okay, so but he on the uh, uh, social media he found the Carol Center. Okay, and uh, he wrote to Dr. Uh, Hamid. Okay, the center director said, "I look at this technology. I really want it, but I don't have the money." Okay, so Dr. Hamid said, come, come over, I'll treat you for free. Okay, so he received this treatment for free. Okay, and uh, so when I visited the center, he, it was his uh, two years follow up. Okay, he was prom pronounced that only have three months to live. This technology at least gave him uh, two years more. Okay, so he was so grateful and he told Dr. Hamid, he said, let me do something. So Dr. Hamid said, why don't you just share your story? So we actually have a video of him, okay, showing his story, uh, uh, you know, so, so this is just one of, I think, two things, but there's so many wonderful stories, okay. Yeah, that's really touching. And I think this technology is like a miracle. It has created much more possibilities for the women who want a baby, and this technology can make it happen to much extent. So um, we're so happy to know all the stories behind and also the technologies Dr. Xing has just introduced us. I think these technologies will go on and will continue to make more benefits and even miracles for those people who are in need. Okay. We're so happy, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Nick. And thank you, Echo. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Dr. Xing and Nick, for this uh, great uh, sharing of, the, of this touching stories and the um, technological support in Haifu uh, to support those co their collaborators all around the world. And it's really important to know that it's not just um, medical supporting uh, technology, but also um, to benefit their financial sides. It's really an industry to improve their uh, economical development in their areas. Uh, so what I just intention to do is to ask you guys to show us, I know, cause I know there is a, a techn technical sh uh, showcasing center area in Haifu Medical. 
about this ultrasound facility there. Are we going to be there to, to witness this really amazing technology to our audience? Is it possible? So, Is it possible yes. that you can you can uh, go there to show us the facility later? Yes, it is possible. So okay. uh, why don't we okay. go there? You guys can head into that. And before that, I'm going to have to ask Mr. Robot to show us some scenarios of their manufacturing. Hi, Mr. Roboto. Hello. We, Hello. We, can go, we, we can go to the through the facility right now. Yeah, I of course. I think Thank I, go, uh, uh, I would like to switch to, um, to the second uh, cell phone for better um, exposition for, of the lines. I, I know mm -hmm. it's possible, this. Of course. OK. Well, Okay. Now you can hear me. Uh, yeah, I can. I can hear you. I'm gonna put you on the screen. And. Uh, Hello. I can hear you well. Yeah, I can. I I can hear you well, really well. Thank you for doing this for us. I know it's a little bit late in your area. No, no problem. We we it's a pleasure for us to to have this uh, exposition and try to show all your all the community all the products that we produce here in Mexico, Mexico. You know, I've been visit uh, some of these ma um, manufacturers, automatic manufacturers in Chongqing, because I've kind of have some um, interest on um, how they would just, uh, you know, produce um, their products on their lines. And we have here. Yes. Uh, actually, I can show you the kind of product that we produce in, in this facility. This is the okay. crankshaft that mainly we produce for for our customer Emerson. Mm -hmm. This is a machining crankshaft, precision precision used for climate technologies. Mm -hmm. And we have in this ex exhibition area four of our products that we are making right now. Okay. This is for uh, small compressors, okay. and this is for big big compressors. This is a part that the the weighs around eight hundred grams and this is a part that is around one point and a half kilograms two different uh, products mm -hmm. uh, and right now we will go to the facility for see how we can produce those parts okay thank you so i want to know what's so special about this compressor about this um uh little facilities uh this this is a, a high precision product because the quality needs for for those parts the tolerance is tight tolerance we produce those parts with five microns tolerance that means that it's very precision component used for move the compressor for air condition uh, machines mm -hmm. got it thank you please continue your journey Okay, right now we are walking to our facility floor shop. Um, for somebody who's holding the phone, can you hold this phone in the vertical version, in the horizontal version? Because you've been holding the like this version. You can just turn it. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, so that. Okay. 
Mr. Roboto, how how much money uh, did they invest on this manufacturing at the first place? Can I ask? Uh, we are invest in this company around twenty five million dollars. Twenty five million uh, yeah. around in, in technology and around five million in the facility uh, of, the, mm -hmm. uh, of this plant. In U.S. dollars or in RMB? In U.S. dollars. Okay. Right now, we will start to show the how we start the process. How we is the beginning of produce those parts. Okay. Here, we receive our material. Uh, we receive the bundle from by truck from United States. This is actually our current supplier. The customer is located in Texas. It's around 300 kilometers from our facility. And we receive the material in bundles, steel bundles like this. Wow. After, after quality, after quality inspect all the material and approve the tolerance and characteristics, different characteristics of the product, we release the material ready for start the production process. Mm -hmm. All the material must to be certified first before mm -hmm. to start to produce a part. We mm -hmm. have three different sizes: is uh, five and seven inch, one and one point one one inch and one sixteen and one inch three sixteen tolerance after so we, 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 we yes i'm sorry just keep continue after we validate all the all the process we start our first step that is the cutting cutting the steel steel bars I've known that your manufacturer has really high standard of the quality of your products. You've been reached a really high standard. Um, also, you've been created a high standard for this kind of product compressor. Is that correct? Yes, of course. This is the raw material after we, we cut it. This is only a single steel bar. Mm -hmm. Well, the first step is to cut the, the length of this bar. This is start with a high quality. It's mm -hmm. no cutting by so much in. This is, we use um, a special insert disc for cut and have this smooth surface. This surface provides to us the, the length of the bar that we will produce in later in turning process. That is a CNC machining process. Okay. Every part every part that we produce or operator checking the parts and verify the length. We mm -hmm. have a special devices special quality gauges for checking the length and, oh. be, and be sure that every part that we produce the variation is no more than 0.1 millimeter this is after, impressive after we we cut in the part mm -hmm. all our material we pass to the next step that is the turning process we will see the, the turning process right now okay Actually, we have four automated lines for produce the turning process. In this area, we name it roughing process. All the material that, that I showed you before, mm -hmm. the cutting material, is placed in these conveyors. These conveyors are used for automatic. The robots take the parts and introduce in the mini, in the in the turning machines for. Yeah, made the profile of the chart. Mm -hmm. We will provide, we'll show you before and after the part. Okay. Is there any advantages to adapt this, um, you know, production line in your area the in this uh, material collecting? Yeah, actually. 
we change the profile of the material from the raw material bar to a semi-finished uh, crankshaft. The advantage that use this technology is fully automated. Only we use one operator for running six machines. This is the advantage because we don't need to use the operator for low, uh, low the part inside to the to each lane. This is an automated lane. Mm -hmm. We can see how it starts the process. Wow. We put in the part. Wow. And we made a provide. Wow. wow. Is this the, the inner side of the uh, machine? Yes, right now it is inside the machine. We can see wow. uh, through a, a window for verify that it is running properly and the cutting the steel is according that we programming in the machine. This is our CNC program that we are running. We, this is the part that we made until now in this year. And we control characteristics by quality, dimension, uh, surface quality for assure that the parts are properly made in this machine. After finish the, 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 the job, we have automatic anti system that take the part and load the part for the next process. Mm. They take the part, change the silver, and they pass to the other process. Oh, that I did not expect, and I did not see anything like this. And it's really impressive to have those little window to to inspect the production line to in uh, the production process. In this okay, um, Mr. Mr. Ho uh, Mr. Roboto has been popped out of the screen, and we are waiting for his coming back to join us again. I think there has been some connecting problems. I'm gonna reach. Okay, I'm gonna have to ask Miss Dr. Xing and Nick to wait for just a bit, a little bit longer because it's really important for our overseas audience to see this kind of manufacturing. Uh, you can hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Uh, something that I try to explain is we are in this facility, we're working with men and, and women for many jobs. We have a very good training system that we provide the, the correct skills to the operators for control all the quality characteristics of the product. Actually, we have woman worker using the CNC machine mm -hmm. and producing the parts for different processes. In the first machine, we see how we can turn in the, the sharp body. And in this machine, we make a fall through because it's an a important characteristic of this shaft that is needed for make all the uh, oiling, all the we need for lubrication default. After made this one process, we make a milling process. We have other machines, they make milling machines that they make holes and flat areas in all the body of the shaft. After we made the, the, the shape of the shaft, we made some mm -hmm. holes, some planes, that is needed according to the design of this specific crankshaft. This is a, a top material. If you crush this material, you can mark the part very easy. For control, that the material is not very soft, we need to harden in the material. For this process, we have carburizing furnaces that provide the enough hard surface hardness of this surface. You will see, or treatment process for made this job. Got it. Yeah, I know. We are our, our all audience. The is to... mm -hmm. All the technology that we see before is from this is our heat treatment area. We have a mm -hmm. carburizing furnaces. Mm -hmm. 
those are a very big machines. Inside, we place all the material in a rack and we're carburizing the parts at 800, 850 Celsius degrees to provide the enough hardening for the material. You see the... For control, we need to control all the metallurgical characteristics of these products. We have a special laboratory for make all the testing needed. In this laboratory, we check it, the surface quality, the hardening, the surface hardening. And this is all the parts after finish the heat treatment process. The parts for have this kind of quality need to pass around eight hours inside to the furnaces. The, the difference is that this part is very hard, very difficult to deform or to mark after heat treatment process. This is our special baskets that we use for place the material inside to the, to the furnaces. And for control the characteristics of, the, of this material, we have this, labor, this kind of laboratory. This is a high quality laboratory. We prepare the, our samples, we cut in our material, we have this machinery for polishing the, 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 the material. And after that, we made inside a, a sample and we polish the sample for check all the surface quality. And in this microscope, we check how is the grain size of the steel, how is the, the, the surface quality of the material. And we validate all the, all the characteristics of the, of, the, of the material according to the customer requirements. Oh. The next step, the next step is after heat treatment, the material is a little bit distorted or bending. We need to make it straight for the next process that is a center that's grinding process. We will see the machinery. I must say, I have to agree with Ken just said. Um, he said having Roboto showing us actually walking and showing us uh, the physical processes was a really real treat today. And he said he didn't expect this level of in-depth detail in inform. As I, as I mentioned before, the material is stored in heat treatment processes and we need to destroy the part. We have this kind of mm -hmm. automatic process for making the, the part completely straight. straight. And after that, we can provide the next step that is centerless grinding. And wow. we have operators for, for check the quality of the parts and put in a basket for the next step. Oh, so that's the whole process. Is that a whole process of your production of the compressor? Yes. This is, this is oh, the I different think... step mm -hmm. before to finish the, finish the part. Mm -hmm. This we can see they are automatic. just uh, automatically, really automatic uh, automation. We yes. can see that, and there are really just few workers in the manufacturing. The automation rate is really high there. Yes, with automation, we can reduce the amount of people that we use for produce the parts. Mm -hmm. The next step we will see is. The, the, the bulk material is straightened, is placed in this basket, and then you are taken by the operator for made a centerless grinding. We will show you a part grinding. This is the, the difference between a raw material and grinding material. Mm -hmm. You see, it's like a oh. mirror. And the, and the quality of these diameters mm -hmm. The tolerance is plus minus five micron. Mm -hmm. the, the, this tight tolerance, if, if you imagine the how uh, how is the thick of the hair, the hair thick is around 50 microns. 
and the type tolerance of this is five microns. It's ten times less than the type of the high of the head, the tolerance of this part. And only we can produce this with a special machine that is named centerless grinding machine. This is amazing. We can see the compression. We can see the uh, contrast between uh, the high quality product from your production line and the normal ones. And we have next step or customer request that we grinding other surface of the of the of the part that is this place. We have automatic machine for make this job and the operator we use the operator for low and low the parts inside to the machine. Also, Mr. Roboto, I can see there are many female workers in your manufacturers. I think they are really wor working really hard. And I'm, I'm admired of that. It's kind of a similar to uh, situations in Chongqing. Because in Chongqing, I see those female workers everywhere. And they've been working really hard, just like those uh, men. You know? So I'm really admired. I think that's a connection between Chongqing and your city. I think that this a problem. Uh, the 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 labor is a mundial problem because we don't have enough men for make the different activities and jobs. In mm -hmm. Mexico, we are equal the women and the men, and we can make the same job every everyone, and we give the same opportunities to the men and to the women for make the job. For the reason in this company, we have around half percent women and half percent of men for for make the different activities and jobs needed in, in our company. We provide Thank the you. same the same the same equality for everyone. Equal, everyone. equal, equal, equal pay for women and men. This is really important. Yes. This is really important. Equal uh, pay for everyone. If, if you ask me, if you ask me personality, the men are uh, make up the the jobs more tough jobs, more hard jobs. And the women are more focused in the quality, in the control uh, of the characteristics of the part. And if, uh, we prefer women for control the quality of this specific part too. They are more dedicated for, for making this kind of job. Mm, I can see that from your manufacturing. We have, we have women checking the part, controlling the quality of the part. Wow. And they well trained them before to make this job. The, for the, in this specific case, the part was marking before. We have a marking mm -hmm. machine for, for, for made the, the identification of the price part. tag. We oh, have a, a, an ID and this, an ID for every part. And after oh. that, the, the operator check 100% for be sure that all the parts that we produce in this company is free of any defect. When they finish the job, they watch in the machine, the parts, and we can packaging and provide to the final customer all parts. Only we use the, the people for control the, the key characteristics and low and low the parts inside to the machine. But for many job, we have a very good training system for not avoid avoid any mistake in, in, in this process. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Roboto. Thank you for sharing this hardworking bustle and hustle atmosphere in your manufacturing. And we can see this is this the whole process that you want to share with us, right? Yes, this is the whole process. Uh, we have uh, finally um, a special laboratory. In this mm -hmm. special laboratory, we measure mm -hmm. all this kind of type tolerance. We can show you our laboratory. And with okay. this, we can finish the tour. The plan tour of this okay. okay, this has been an amazing tour. And I think our audience have really enjoy this tour because none of this ha ever happened in Ai Chongqing's channel to go this deep in uh, Mexico, Mexican company, Mexican manufacturing with our eyes. This is really impressive. For example, here we have our 
dimensional laboratory. We have our people checking all the different characteristics of the product. We have an automatic machines too for validate all the characteristics. This mm -hmm. is a wrongness machines tested mm -hmm. and they automatic mm -hmm. measure the, the part before. The, Whoa. You can see that the machine is working along. Wow. And we have here a CMM machine for measure all the dimensional characteristics. This is wrongness for measure the wrongness and the surface quality. And mm -hmm. we have other high technology like quick vision. That is a machine mm -hmm. that with a camera, we can see the profile for a small surface of the, of the part. We need this high technology too for control the characteristics of the product and provide our customer a high quality products. This is really important uh, to show us your uh, this high technology studio studio because we know such elegant uh, facilities uh, of your products require those technology to produce to inspect the quality and stuff like that. Yes. Uh, I don't know if you have a specific question or audience for, for us or try to explain or provide more information about how working a facility here in Mexico. Um, I'm asking our audience to do that because I just saw all of your process in this manufacturing and I'm really satisfied with your detailed information introduction. But I still want to read those comments to show how proud I am to have those audience and the content in the our guest today. This uh this audience, this this one from audience, I am ambassador and Tenneth, the former council general of Ethiopia in Chongqing, Ethiopia, Ethiopia in Chongqing, Ethiopia. I'm so sorry. I want to con con congratulate. I thank him for this wonderful live live program. The moderator is excellent. Keep the good work alive. I think everybody has been satisfied with this content. That, as I just said, we never dive into a Mexican company and manufacturing with those depth and those detailed information introduction. And I'm really grateful for that, Mr. Roboto. So um, I'm gonna switch our camera to. Uh, Haifu Medical Center in Chongqing. Is that okay? So me, Dr. Xing has been waiting for this so long. I know it's really challenging for this uh, big size of our um, audience to wait for this and also our guests waiting there, but I have to switch the ca this camera back. Thank you, Mr. Roboto. I'll see the greetings to you in the end of our show. Please just wait um, in about five minutes or later. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Back to you, Hi, Dr. Shi. We're back. Back to you. So we have yes. a question, uh, and uh, if you can answer our question for our audience, because I know Ken has a question. Does this center, I mean, he means Haifu Center, have any have anyone in New Zealand operations? Not yet. We're working on that. Okay, see that, Kevin. See that, Kevin. Thank you. So, get back to you, Doctor Xing. Yes. Uh, okay. So, uh, thank you, Echo, and uh, thank you for those of you who uh, have been waiting uh, to see this part of the uh, demonstration. Okay. So, a, a few things I want to share with you. Okay. Um, for those of you, so we created actually. A surgical a, a procedure room, okay, and for you to visualize or uh, to uh, uh, try to put yourself in the scenario to undergo uh, such a surgery, okay. So this is our uh, system. This model is the JC two hundred system, okay, and uh, where our engineer sits there is where usually our doctors who sits there, okay. And the, what you're going to find, so the distance between your doctor and the you, it's just like that, okay? So what you find is different is that this is not a typical surgical room. You don't have, you are conscious. So for women who go under through like a, 
uh, procedures for adenomyosis and the fibroids, and even for some cancer procedures, we use sedation. What does it mean? It means you don't feel the, much of the pain, okay, and you're conscious. And your doctor can even have live conversation with you to inquire about do you feel the pain? Or if you feel the, uh, the heat and say, oh, I feel the heat somewhere, okay? Oh. So the, you can communicate, uh, there's communication between the doctor and the, the patients, okay? Uh, so on the doctor side, you find, say, how does the doctor operate on me? So this is an invisible life. So doctors the, operate on you by clicking the mouse. So it's a digitized the technology. So this is non-invasive, means no contact. So also you can understand why during COVID-19, our international centers continued this treatment is because there's no contact between the doctor and the patients, okay? So uh, the doctors will work on the, actually you is a full screen, okay? We'll uh, have your tumor information on the screen. And also it's very important is that the doctors can see the treatment effect in real time, means the dot by dot, okay, you will see whether the tumor is being uh, uh, treated, okay? So before and after the tumor, we doctors will know for certainty that the treatment is uh, satisfactory, okay, in the clinical side sense, okay? Huh. So where do you sit? Do you do your lines? You, this is actually, the patients will lie in the prone position on this bed. So this is called the treatment bed, okay? So if you look at this the orange thing, so this is the core technology of that Chongqing Haifu has the invented, okay? So by the way, Chongqing Haifu is the world leading provider, leader, okay, in the ultrasound uh, therapeutics uh, field, okay? Uh, so therefore, this is called the transducer. So that's, it's equivalent to that magnifying glass. Okay, convert uh, the ultrasound energy to heat. Okay, how? So you don't need to move. You just lie comfortably there, okay, consciously, uh, but in the sedation mode. So the transducer can move in four, three dimensional, okay, uh, and it automatically will be uh, will be controlled by the doctors uh, sitting over there, okay? So, so is this amazing? This will trans completely um, revolutionize how you go under surgery, okay? So why we call this uh, 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 invisible knife, okay? So we'll do a live demonstration, okay? So this material is uh, heat sensitive, okay? So do you see that white dot? the size of a grain. So this is the one focal point, okay, of the knife. And you can see the, the color changes, uh, disappear. As the heat dissipates, uh, the, it, it, uh, it, it disappear. okay. So I will ask our en uh, uh, engineer to show you, so this is called a dot. So we do the, doctors will do the treatment planning it's like a dot by dot. In the dot, there connects the line, line by line, that is the volume. So this is the treatment per simple. So I ask our engineer actually to show uh, one, he does the line, dot by dot, okay? The movement, what you will see, okay? Watch closely. So then watch it closely. So it appears. So now actually the transducers moves. What do you see? This line. So this is called a dot to line. Does it look like a, the tip of the knife? Okay, so we call this uh, uh, invisible mm -hmm. knife because it's very sharp. Okay, so that's why the doctors has to receive vigorous training because this is a sharp knife, okay? If it's not delivered to the wrong place, can cause uh, uh, undesigned effects, okay? Oh. So this is uh, how this uh, uh, knife works, okay? So let me show you another demo, okay? So you may ask the question says, wow, this thing, okay, is powerful. Will, when it, uh, uh, you know, uh, transpass my body, 
will it damage my surrounding tissue? What if the doctors, okay, um, do it, okay, um, not carefully, okay, will it cause the damage? Okay, the answer is no. First, the doctor will receive vigorous training, okay? And the second, okay, through this demonstration, I want to show you, okay, um, okay, uh, letting the camera getting closer, okay? So this is, now you see the transducer, okay? And the, the and what the engineer would do is to move the focus point to the, uh, the surface of the water. Then he will put a plastic glass on the, on, on the, the, the surface of the water. The melting point of the uh, plastic glass is 216 Celsius. So that's how high this energy can do, okay? And also the temperature, okay? But the, in, the, in ablating a tissue, uh, a, Q, a tumor cell, we only need the temperature in the range of 65 to 80, okay? So therefore, it means it's, the temperature can also be controlled, okay? Ah. So watch this, uh, okay? So I watch that. I'll put my hands, okay, underneath where the pass, okay, so watch the white part above, and I feel a little small vibration, okay. So it continues to ablate this, okay, remember the melting temperature is 260, 16, okay, so if one of you can jump out of the screen, touch it, uh, Nick, touch it. Whoa. Whoa. It is, uh huh? High temperature. It's so, very hot. so when you see this white, imagine it's like imagine this is the tumor. It's been cooked. That's it's dead. Okay. Huh. So this, and my hands, fine. Okay. So this is the techn the principle of utilize the technology. The ultrasound can be focused, but the ultrasound beam itself is non is is harmless. And the, the core technology is that we only want it to be focused on the lesion we want to treat and the leaving the surrounding tissue undamaged. Okay, and through our clinical protocol and clinical training, we make sure there's no damage done. Okay, actually in one of our, our study, okay, involving 2,400 patients, okay, the complication rate is as low as 0.02%. That means it's very low. Okay, how? Huh. Okay, so another, de so the, the patients, okay, so those of you who said, okay, uh, can you, if, can, can, what if the tumor grows in the weird shape? Okay, can you have every piece of the uh, tumor, or especially it's malignant, okay, what if you're missing a part? So in cancer treatment, by the principle of surgery, Okay, the tumors has to be treated called conformal, which means entirely, no matter what shape it is. But uh, the tumors actually grow usually in weird ways with not a clear uh, edge, okay? This is the difference between a malignant tumor and, uh, uh, and a benign tumor, okay? Huh. So let's uh, do, the, uh, I will show you a video, okay? In this video, We'll show you this technology. How do we carve China, the character of China, okay, inside a piece of ox liver? In another word, okay, if you can imagine your tumor grow as complicated as the character of China, can we treat it? Okay, so this video will show you, yes, we can do the conformal treatment, precise treatment, okay, through this technology, non-invasively, okay? So watch this video. Okay, this of course is a, is a speed it up. Okay, okay, stay there, okay? So when you watch the process, what do you see? Okay, the, imagine the, the tumor is the shape of the character. So the doctors actually did the treatment planning, say, okay, I'm going to ablate these two words. We say we scar, carve these two words, okay? So after he did it, the treatment, 
okay, procedure, when he slides the two where he, uh, the, the plan, where he uh, uh, has the character, you see the color change, uh, compare the color of the character China with the surrounding tissue, it's whitish. Why? It's cooked. When you cook an egg, when you open the egg, what color is it? When you cook a piece of meat, the meat turns from red to uh, white. It's the same principle. Okay, so this, uh, so for the cancer patients, okay, uh, I think uh, this is very important. Okay, so therefore, uh, so I hope, uh, uh, Echo, with this uh, uh, demonstration, uh, the general audience who uh, is at the live stream can appreciate this technology and can appreciate how cool and how transformative this technology is, okay? And, uh, um, and one thing I want to mention is that, okay, um, for a new technology, for the cutting edge technology like this, okay, I think a good technology of the, we call it the technology of the future. Okay, because it's digitized and you already see the telemedicine center. Okay, we can do the uh, uh, live surgery, okay, uh, in the global sense, okay. And also, I think a very important thing is the technology of the future should, be, should have the capacity to deliver the technology and the service to the general public, not only just the social, social and economically elite, and I'm very happy to share with all the audience that we, we are just doing that, okay? So in, in the uh, developed countries, it's, this uh, technology with the non-invasive treatment uh, surgery is already the demand of the patients, okay? But in develop, developing countries, okay, or uh, like in Africa, okay? Um, so this technology can also provide uh, has bring us Africa from the largely invasive to non-invasive. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I'm really grateful for having you in our show to introduce this information and share the demonstration of the high ultrasound uh, equipment and technology for us. And I, I've seen that many people are uh, here commenting about their excitement and their uh, awesome admiring for this technology. And I bet there are only a few people who have seen this. And uh, I'm really um, happy to see that people can, through our show, can appreciate those uh, technological development in Chongqing and also how it would benefit those um, areas worldwide, like cities in Mexico, like cities in Africa and also cities in anywhere globally. Thank you, Dr. Xin, Thank for you. showing us. Thank you, Echo. Thank you. I think that's it for today's content. Um, I want to ask our guest from Mexico because um, it's hard for us to connect together in such wonderful time in the beginning of a new year. And I want to know if you have you guys ever visited Chongqing, Mr. Uh, Jorge, have you have you ever met visit Chongqing? Do you are you planning on visit Chongqing in the future? We we haven't had the chance to visit uh, Chongqing, but we are on on plans on doing that very soon. Yes, look Thank forward you. to see you in Chongqing. Yeah. Can you hear that? So thank you uh, for sitting there for uh, for this show to go on and to um, receive our uh, investment, uh, invited them to, to do this live stream. And I'm really grateful for that. And I think this is the end of our show. I wanted to ask um, Mr. Roboto, have you ever visited Chongqing? Do you planning on visit Chongqing in the future, or is there any chance for you to 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 come to here to connect with us? I I have been in Chongqing in 2017. For me, it was a pleasure to see your your city. For it's a very amazing city of China. I was very impressive for when I visit the the city, the the structure, the buildings. Uh, 
um, the bridge, the highways are, are very high quality level in the world. And I was very impressive for visit and have the opportunity the chance to visit this, this very beautiful city. I'm looking forward to for you to visit again. And I know with the China borders being reopened, we have more chance for our international friends to come here and to uh, further improve the communication and the cooperation with us in Chongqing. So playing an important role in the Belt and Road Initiative and the development of an inland opening up highland, Chongqing has always kept dynamic and close economic, economic ties with Mexico. In 2022, the Chong Mexican Chamber of Commerce in China sets office in Chongqing. Besides uh, the city, uh, the city where these uh, uh, local companies are invested, the, the uh, Vivon Leon and the Chongqing has signed a sister state relationship in 2013. And also, we have so many things in common. We all like spicy food in Mexico and in Chongqing. We all have really beautiful people, really heartwarming people, hardworking people here. And I think there has been some connectivities and relationship that we wanted to build in the future. And that's really important for both sides of us to build this um, bilateral relationship together, all togetherly no matter it's in economic, in uh, technological, or in cultural, or in manufacturing field. And I'm really looking forward to that. So thank you guys for thank presenting you. this show with me together, our guests, Jorge, Mr. Jorge, Mr. Rob Roboto, and Dr. Xing, also Nick, also the translator, thank Eric, you. thank you for the hard work. And also everybody's been working for this show to to help us together for doing this show. And uh, thank you guys for watching this. It's almost two hour show and it's quite a long time show. And I hope you guys enjoy this. Hi, Kevin. Hi, Nick and Brenda and Ken and thank everybody you. has been with us. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you. Thank you for thank the invitation. You. Thank, you. thank you. See you. Bye bye. Yeah, see you. See ya. <laughs> 